When the latest Indiana Jones movie finally reached theaters, my husband and I decided to go see Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny on the big screen. Because Indiana Jones movies are best viewed in a theater while consuming real movie popcorn. In case you're wondering, the film played true to form, meeting our expectations for a never a dull moment, keep them guessing sort of plot, and lots of crazy stunts. The movie includes all the stuff Indiana Jones is known for. High-speed chases, evil Nazis, mad scientists, arcane objects, snakes, bugs, caverns, planes, trains, and automobiles. This franchise understands the notes it must hit and the tropes it must include to meet fan expectations. It fits neatly in the historical fantasy subgenre that plays on historical events and pseudo-scientific artifacts. So today, we are going to discuss fantasy tropes, from high fantasy to urban dystopia. Hey, Writing Pursuits authors, welcome back to the podcast. To those of you who are new, I want to extend a special welcome. My name is Catherine McKee, and I'm glad you're here. If you are a writer seeking encouragement, information, and inspiration, this podcast is for you. Let's get to it. The fans of every fiction genre and subgenre have certain expectations, and most of those expectations involve tropes. Fantasy stories, at their heart, are intended to evoke wonder and explore imagination. There are familiar themes, motifs, and archetypes common to fantasy. However, these tropes never get old because they can be combined in countless ways to entertain us. Fantasy frequently involves quests or journeys, magical and supernatural elements, chosen ones and prophecies, and imaginary worlds and settings. Fantasy often includes creatures and races, fascinating beasts, and mythical societies. Nearly always, fantasy stories feature a battle between good and evil, frequently on an epic scale, so fantasy heroes and villains tend to be exceptional too. When I first started writing fantasy, I honestly didn't give a lot of consideration to the tropes and expectations. I just started writing the kind of story I wanted to read. However, I think it would have been much better if I had really considered and fully understood the tropes and expectations. I wouldn't have struggled as much in the beginning. The fantasy genre is huge, so I want to break it down into common subgenres. This isn't intended to be an exhaustive list because really, Fantasy is only limited by the author's imagination. The first subgenre everyone thinks of when they hear fantasy is high fantasy. Think Lord of the Rings or classic Dungeons and Dragons quests. High fantasy is characterized by grand adventures in immersive worlds. Common tropes include protagonists who embark on dangerous epic quests and heroic journeys to save the world or at least to save their corner of the world. Magic and supernatural elements play a crucial role, often depicted through spells, mythical creatures, and enchanted artifacts. Medieval-inspired settings are common in high fantasy, so castles and dungeons, knights, and feudal systems are prevalent. Often, the weaponry is medieval, too. Traditional fantasy includes races like elves, dwarves, orcs, or fantastical beasts like unicorns, griffins, and dragons. The battle between good and evil, often symbolized by a dark lord or a menacing force, is a recurring theme in high fantasy. Prophecies and chosen ones, where destiny plays a huge role in singling out the hero, is another frequent feature. To help you identify high fantasy, I'm going to list a few example titles. The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. A Song of Ice and Fire, also known as Game of Thrones, by George R.R. Martin. You don't have to have R.R. as your middle initials, but it seems to help. The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan. The Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. And so on. So I hope that helps. High fantasy is the first thing folks think of when they hear you are writing fantasy. But there are other subgenres. It turns out that my own series, the Martin Smart series, is low fantasy. So what is low fantasy? This fantasy subgenre is characterized by its grounded and minimal use of fantastical elements. Unlike high fantasy, low fantasy tends to be more rooted in reality, and it may incorporate elements of the supernatural or fantastical in subtle, 
or limited ways. In low fantasy, the primary setting is typically the real world or a world that closely resembles the real world. My world in Martin's Mark is an alternative earth. The animals are familiar rather than fantastical. The characters are human. The supernatural aspects of the series are restrained. Sometimes I wish I had incorporated dragons into this series, but it's way too late for that. One of the defining characteristics of low fantasy is its focus on the internal struggles and personal journeys of its characters rather than grand battles or epic world-saving quests. The fantastical elements in low fantasy may be mysterious or subtle, often taking the form of folklore, superstitions, or glimpses of the supernatural. Magic, if it is present, is rare, dangerous, or hidden. Low fantasy stories explore themes such as moral ambiguity, human nature, and the blurred lines between reality and the supernatural. The tone of low fantasy can range from dark and gritty to introspective and philosophical. It may incorporate elements of other subgenres like mystery, historical fiction, or horror, blending them with the fantastical to create a unique narrative experience. As you can tell, low fantasy is not easy to pin down and often crosses with other fantasy subgenres. Examples of low fantasy works include Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere, where an ordinary man discovers a hidden world beneath London, and Guy Gavriel Kay's Tigana, and I hope I said that right, which combines elements of historical fiction with subtle magical undertones. That brings us to historical fantasy. Historical fantasy blends fantasy elements with real historical settings and events. Tropes in this subgenre involve alternate histories or divergent timelines where magic or mythical elements intertwine with historical accuracy. Authors skillfully integrate real historical figures, cultures, and societal structures into their narratives. By exploring social and cultural themes through a fantasy lens, historical fantasy provides a fresh perspective on the past. Balancing authenticity and imaginative elements allows for engaging and thought-provoking storytelling. If you write in this particular subgenre, really get your history right, because people will know. So Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny fits in the historical fantasy subgenre. Examples of books that are historical fantasy include Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark, Outlander series by Diana Gibaldon, and The Baroque Cycle by Neal Stephenson. Let's keep moving with the urban fantasy subgenre. Urban fantasy is one of my favorite subgenres, and that probably means I'm kind of messed up. Urban fantasy brings fantastical elements into contemporary settings. Tropes in this genre include hidden magical societies coexisting with the modern world, protagonists with supernatural abilities who navigate intricate systems of magic, urban environments that include mythological creatures such as vampires, werewolves, and the fae. Mystery and action are often components, so characters work to unravel supernatural secrets and grapple with personal conflicts. The blending of the familiar and the fantastic, such as magic lurking beneath city streets, creates a unique sense of wonder and intrigue. A few examples of urban fantasy are The Dresden Files by Jim Butcher, Court of Midnight and Deception series by K.M. Shea, Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling, Percy Jackson and the Olympians series by Rick Riordan, The Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare, and The Raven Cycle series by Maggie Stiefvater. All right, let's move on. The fairy tale fantasy. The world of fairy tales is where most of us had our first encounter with fantasy. Disney wouldn't exist if it wasn't for fairy tales. The main thing you need to know about fairy tale fantasy is that it is rooted in traditional folklore and aims to reimagine or retell classic stories. Tropes in this subgenre include the use of familiar characters and settings from well-known stories, moral lessons and themes of good versus evil. Magical objects and transformations often serve as plot devices. Endings may adhere to the happily ever after trope or subvert expectations, providing unexpected twists and turns. The power of storytelling itself is emphasized in fairy tale fantasy, and the stories serve to highlight the enduring nature of fairy tales and their ability to capture the imagination. Examples of fairy tale fantasy stories include the Lunar Chronicles 
by Marissa Meyer, Stardust by Neil Gaiman, The Fairyland series by Catherine M. Volante, The Light Princess by George MacDonald, and The Fairest Beauty by Melanie Dickerson. And finally, I would like to mention Science Fantasy, which crosses over with science fiction. Tropes include a fusion of advanced technology with magical or mystical worlds. Protagonists navigate space opera or planetary adventures while encountering fantastical elements. The combination of magic and futuristic concepts raises philosophical and ethical questions. Science fantasy is a unique blend of genres that bridges the gap between science and fantasy. In my opinion, Doctor Who fits this space. Get it? (laughs) Space. The Doctor is surrounded by gadgets and gizmos and travels through space and time to explore strange new worlds. Oh, uh, I think I'm crossing into a different series there. Actually, you could make an argument for including a few of the Star Trek episodes here. Examples of science fantasy books include The Space Trilogy by C.S. Lewis, Dune by Frank Herbert, and every Star Wars book ever written. Fantasy is messy, but fantasy authors get to create captivating worlds, epic battles, and unforgettable characters. I hope you have enjoyed this deep dive into the realms of fantasy, where the timeless tropes continue to ignite our imaginations and transport us to extraordinary worlds. My question for this week is, what are your favorite fantasy books, series, or authors? Leave your comments and questions below. Thanks for watching today. If you enjoyed this episode or learn something you can use, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to this channel and then click the notification bell so you never miss an episode. That's all I have for today. Until next time, keep writing, my friends. Keep writing.